Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and today we're going to try and sort out some of the issues caused by Windows updates and how to resolve them. Keep watching to find out more. Okay, so on today's video, we're going to try and fix some of the problems and some of the error messages caused by the Windows Update Service and failed updates. Now, this is more prevalent at the moment with the November 2019 update, which has been causing a few problems, but also those who are trying to upgrade from Windows 1809 up to 1903, and some from 1903 to 1909. So this is also referenced in the Knowledge Base article, uh, Knowledge Base 4524570, so you can check that out. Again, I'll put links for all this kind of stuff in the description below. Also, I've created a notepad document with all of the um, commands that are used in this video and they'll be in the video notes below as well so you can check those out for yourself uh, obviously if you want to bookmark the video and come back to it and reference it at any time so two of the main issues are with windows updates two error messages now we'll, go, we'll have a look on the computer now we'll go through the messages and then we'll go through how to fix them so uh, grab yourself a brew and uh, let's get on with it okay so this is a uh, common site some of you will be getting so your error message is going to be 0x 8007-3701. And also the other error message is this one, which is the Microsoft error message. This one is error 0x8009001 d Now both of these relate to the same thing with the current uh, knowledge base or security patch update. Now this particular patch is actually designed to help with uh, vulnerabilities or flaws in the Microsoft Edge browser and also Internet Explorer. So obviously it isn't massively important if you're not using that particular browser, but being that Windows does have quite a close tie to those, it's obviously worth sorting out. So what we're gonna to need to do is to see if our Windows Store is corrupted. Now there's various ways of doing this, so we're gonna go through it kind of step by step and you can follow along and try it out for yourself. And what we're gonna do first of all is we're gonna actually sample the system to see if we've got any errors. So let's take a look at our notepad and these are the steps. So step one is the analysis. So what we need to do is analyze the system to see if there is actually problems with the uh, image that we've got on the system. So what we're gonna have to do is in Windows type in CMD and we wanna have a elevated command prompt. So run it as administrator and click okay to the user account control. And then what we can do is just copy and paste. So we just copy and paste, so copy And we'll paste that, press enter. So this is the uh, this is analyzing the component store. So if you go into your Windows folder, or C drive, then Windows, there's a folder called WinSXS. And this is where all your Windows components are located. So this system at the moment is now gonna go in and analyze the component store in that folder and see if there's actually any issues with it. Now, if there are any issues with it, then they're gonna have to rectify those, uh, but it's a good idea to analyze it first of all see a how big it is what files are in use and all those kinds of things so if we look here now we've got the component stores uh, been scanned so the windows explorer is reporting the size of the component store to be 8.3 gigabytes which is uh, pretty much normal uh, the actual size of the component store is 7.95 gigabytes now the reason behind this is because windows does hard linking to some of the components in the store so although they're linked elsewhere in the operating system they're physically only in one location kind of like how a database works. So of those components shared with Windows is 8.5 gigabytes. And in the backups and disabled features, there's 2.14 gigabytes and there's nothing in our temporary cache. So if you wanted to actually uh, make some more space on your Windows drive, you want to save those 2.14 gigabytes, you can actually run a cleanup, which will get rid of some of the older versions, which we'll come on to in a little bit. The reason behind why you might want to do that is because if Windows Update is trying to update a component, but it's actually cross-linking to the wrong component or a previously installed component from a previous version or a previous service pack, then getting rid of the older backups may actually help with that. So we've analyzed the component store and we've got no problems there and it's correctly uh, re reporting the sizes, etc. So what we want to do now is to scan for any corrupted files in that Windows image. So although we've got the, uh, the sizes, we don't know how healthy it is. So again, what we can do is copy this and again, get a command prompt in the administrator role and just control V to paste that in and then we can scan the health. Now this one will take a little bit while, so we'll probably fast forward through some of this. Okay, 
Okay, so the last 100% bit it, uh, runs a little bit slowly, but it says there, no component store corruption has been detected and the operation is completed successfully. So at this point, if you do actually find that there is uh, store corruption detected, what you can do is go down to the next bit, which is the uh, DISM command for restoring health. So we're not gonna run that because there's no need to, but if you do the scan health and there is issues, if you do restore health, then that will get the Windows image back to how it should actually be. Now, once you've done all this, it's a really good idea to run the sfc.exe command forward slash, uh, space forward slash scan now. Now this is the Windows system file checker. Always a really good idea to run this if you're having any issues with Windows, either blue screens, any kind of issues, and especially Windows update issues. So again, we won't run sfc.exe sfc right now because I've actually run that previously and it's uh, fixed any issues. So the next part to do is to actually look at completely cleaning up our um, components. So we've got a couple of options here we can do. So this first one is the uh, cleanup image, so start component cleanup. So this will run a cleanup of all the components in the Windows folder and uh, cleans the, basically the component store. So if there's any damage or anything, it can clear out all those sorts of things. Um, the next one down is a similar version of it, but this one's got actually reset base built into it. So this will remove all the unnecessary components in the store. So this will actually help to reduce some of the size and also will prevent hard link into any of the previous versions of the service packs or updates or anything that is unnecessary. So this for me, the reset base version is actually probably the best one for most people to use. Now, if you wanna be a little bit more uh, enthusiastic and obviously reduce the size of the Windows folder and all those kinds of things, then the last one is the start component cleanup space four slash SP superseded. So this will actually reduce space, but the problem is with this, if you do run it, then you will be unable to roll back your Windows version. So if you updated to 1909 and you wanna roll back to 1903 or any previous version uh, of the service packs or updates, then you will not be able to because those files will be removed. So this is the kind of like the last ditch attempt. If you do that, you cannot go back. So for some of you, reset base might be the best one. So we're gonna go ahead now, and I'm not gonna do the superseded one, I'm gonna just do the reset base. So we'll copy and paste that. So right click, choose copy, open up a command prompt again with the elevated privileges as the administrator. Paste that in and hit enter. So now what this is gonna do is go into all the Windows S, X, S, folders and look at all the individual components which are needed for Windows and I'll reset them back to what they should actually be. And again, if there's any corrupted versions, any wrong versions, any mislabeled versions, all that kind of thing, then it's gonna go ahead and clean those up. So again, we'll uh, let this do its thing and finish off our cup of tea and we'll come back when it's finished. And there we go, so that's uh, completely finished and it says it's completed successfully, so we're all good. So we'll just type exit, close that down. So now we're pretty much done. So the last thing to do is step three, which is the reboot of the system, and then we can go ahead and check for updates. So at this point, you should have a clean system, a, a clean Windows image, and all of your uh, Windows components should now be where they should be, the correct versions, no mismatches, and all that kind of stuff. So you should find after a reboot, you will be able to do your Windows updates or install drivers or whatever it is you wanna do, and you should have no problems at all. So there we go, there are some options and uh, potential ways of cleaning up your Windows system folder and also resolving some of the stop error messages or Windows installation error messages. If you found this video useful, click on the like button and don't forget to click on the subscribe button for more content like this. If you've got any comments or questions uh, regarding this issue, please feel free to leave them in the section below. But in the meantime, I've been Mike. This is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks for watching.